Hello, everyone. Welcome to my video tutorial for single-cell RNA sequencing data analysis. In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to identify double nits in our single-cell RNA sequencing data using the single-cell double nit finder package. The single-cell double nit finder package has been suggested as a best package for identifying double knit in our single cell RNA sequencing data. Because the identification of double knit in our data set is an important quality control step for our data analysis, especially when the double knit contains different cell types. This will affect your cell clustering later because the double nits contain marked genes for different cell types. So for today's analysis, we need the package SURAT Tidyverse and also the package single cell double nit finder. And once we can set the seed, then we can reproduce the analysis. So for today's demonstration, I'm going to use the single cell RNA sequencing data from the GSE 132771 dataset. This is the dataset that I frequently use the for my SURAT video tutorials. In my first SURAT video tutorial, I showed you how to download the data. So today I'm going to use the Purify the Mexican cells from a healthy non donor. So let's load the data in as AML1. You can see we use the read 10 times function. We have the data at the moment, it is a large DGC matrix data. Then we can use this matrix data as a count to create a threat object. We are going to keep genes that are expressed at least in three cells and keep cells that are expressed at least 200 genes. So let's create the threat object. Again, we are going to use the same name as NML1. So you can see now we have a threat object named as NML1. So next step, we can perform the quality control. First, we can calculate the percentage of mitochondria DNA in this data set. Then we can use the wiring plot to have a look at the N features, RNA, N counts RNA, and the percentage mitochondria DNA. Let's run. You can see we generated a three burning plot for N features RNA, N count RNA, and the percentage mitochondria DNA. I explained before the high quality cells are in this burning shape region. So we can subset the cells to get rid of no quality cells. You can see from the burning shape. We can keep N features higher than 500, lower than 4000. Then we keep cells with N count below 10,000. You can see majority of cells have the count below 10,000. If the cells have the N count more than 10,000, they could be double knit or triple knit as well. So for mitochondria DNA percentage, we are going to cut off from 10%. So now we can use the threshold we set here to subset the data. Let's run. So we performed the basic quality control analysis. Double need find is also a quality control step, but we are going to do it later. So let's have a look at the threat object now. If we connect the threat object, you can see at the moment we have 
seventeen thousand eight hundred and nineteen genes in this data set, and we have nine thousand and eighty three cells. So normally we can perform double knit find here to get rid of double knit from the data set. But for today's demonstration, we are going to render standard thread workflow first. Because after the standard workflow, we can realize the double knit in the cell clusters. So let's run the standard thread workflow. First, we can normalize the data. Then we find the variable features for this data set. After that, we can scale the data. Then we run PCA. So after PCA, we can use the elbow plot to select the best PCs for downstream analysis. Let's generate the elbow plot, you can see. When the PC reach 10, we will capture the most biological information for cell clustering. Let's just use 20 for today's demonstration. Then we can set the deems as 20 to find the neighbors. After find the neighbors, we find the clusters. You can see we have 18 clusters here. Then we can run UMAP. Now we can realize the cell clusters. Let's use the dim plot function to realize the cell clusters. You can see we have 18 cell clusters in total here. At the moment, the data contains double knit. So next, we can run the single cell double knit find function. Because this package was designed to run the analysis using single cell experiment object, and after the analysis, it returns a single cell experiment object to label the cells with single knit or double knit. Because we are analyzing the threat object, so we need to get the assay data from the count. Under the cluster argument, we can use the cluster ident in our threat object. At the moment, the cluster ident for each cell should be labeled as 0 to 17. We can have a look at the cell ident in our threat object. If we run, you can see each cell has been labeled as the cluster number from 0 to 17. Now we can get the counts from the threat object and set the cluster ident for the cluster's argument to run the single cell double knit find function. If we run it, it will return a single cell experiment object. So let's run the single cell double knit find function now. Let's run. So this function is very easy to use compared to other package because we just need to run one single cell double need to find the function. You can see we finish the analysis. It is very quick for this data set and it created a single cell experiment object. We can click on this object and have a look. You can see the column data, metadata. In the column data, you can see the data slot for the NIST data. Here, we can find the, our single cell double-knit find analysis. You can see here is the clusters, 
double knit or single knit classification, then the score. The most important part is this one we are going to use because the cell was labeled as single or double knit. So we can get this information and import it into our threat object. So before we import the single knit or double knit information into the threat object, we can have a look at the metadata for our threat object. Let's review it. You can see at the moment we have the cell barcode as row names, origin, ident, they are AML1. Then we have the n count RNA, m feature RNA, percentage mitochondria DNA. We perform the cell clustering. You can see the threat cell clusters is the last column. Now we can get the single need, double need information from the single cell experiment object and add it into the threat object as a new column. In the metadata, we can use the same name as single cell double knit find class. Let's import the data. If we have a look at the metadata now, you can see we have a new column named as single cell double knit find dot class. You can see the cells are labeled as single knit. Some cells will be enabled as double knit. So now we have a new column in the metadata to enable the cells as double knit or single knit. We can use the table function to have a look at how many double knit in this data set. Let's run. You can see following the analysis, we identified 963 double knit in its data set. Because we cluster the cells, we can set the group by or split by argument as the single cell double knit bind class to look at the double knit in our cell clusters. So first we can group the cells by single knit or double knit. Let's run. You can see we generated the U map. The single need was labeled as red color, then double need were labeled as blue color. You can see most double needs localize on the edge of the cell clusters. And also we can use the split by function to look at the single need and the double need. Let's run. You can see now the cells on the left hand side are single knit, then cells on the right hand side are double knit. If you read the most uh, publications, they suggest that the double knit has a higher n features and also higher n counts. So we can actually set the cell ident as the double knit or single knit, then we can use the wiring plot to have a look at the n features and the n count. So let's first set the ident as a double knit or single knit for all the cells. If we have a look at the cell items now, you can see the cells are labeled as a single knit or double knit. Now, if we run the wiring plot for the N feature RNA and the N counter RNA. Let's run the wiring plot to generate the figure. You can see in the wiring plot, single knit cells for N features and the N count are on the left hand side. The wiring color is in red, then double knit cells are on the right hand side. The wiring shape was labeled in blue color. So you can see both the M feature RNA and the N counter RNA are higher in the double knit than single knit, which means in average, the double knit cells have higher M feature RNA and the N counter RNA. So 
So we label that the cells as the single nit or double nit. Now we can subset the data to get rid of double nit cells. You can use the metadata to subset the data. Because we set the identity as single nit and the double nit for all the cells, we can actually just use the ident to subset the data and keep single nit cells. Let's subset the data using the cell ident. If we run, we should just have single nit cells in the data set now. We can use the dimp node function to confirm we only kept the single nit cells. Let's run. You can see now in the data, we only have the single nit. We get rid of the double nit cells now. So after we got rid of the double nits, we can recognize the cells again. Because we have different cell numbers now, we can run through the whole throughout standard workflow. First, normalize the data. Then find the variable features again and scale the data. Next, we run PCA. After PCA, we can find the neighbors. We are using the same PC numbers. Now we can find the canasters. You can see now we only have 15 cell canasters. Finally, we can run umap. Then we can use the dimp node function to look at the cell canasters after we removed the double nits. Let's run the dimp node to see the cell canasters. You can see from the umap now, we only have 15 cell canasters. And also you can see the changes for the cell canasters on the umap compared to the cell canasters that have the double needs. Okay, that's today's demonstration. I showed you how to use the single cell double need finder function to identify double needs in our single cell RNA sequencing data set. You can see this function is very easy to use, and this function has been suggested as the most efficient and accurate function to identify double need in single cell RNA sequencing data. So I hope this video can help your data analysis. So please subscribe my channel if you haven't to do so, and share my videos with your friends. Thank you.